three Major League Baseball winners for you on Friday. Plus, we get you ready for college football on Saturday. That's what you're getting on today's show. Mark Zinno, not to steal Teddy Cover's gimmick, but uh, what betters learned on yesterday's show is that we are much better than when we agree than we're on opposite yes. sides. A uh, a low light, one for the low light reel with that D Max Mets handicap. Somehow we were both wrong on the same game. Yes, a, a deserved thumbs down there, but please give the show a uh, thumbs up if you've been enjoying this tremendous content. We had a record number of viewership or close to it yesterday, uh, Mark. Yes. Fun was had. At least we won our best bet. We did win our best bet when we agreed on the Phillies Braves agree. over. But that Mets D backs that Mets D backs handicap. Uh, well, you and I were wrong about everything. And we're yeah, on different uh, sides. How, how, how are we wrong? Let us count the ways. Uh, I said David Peterson gets a ton of run support. He did not. You said the Arizona Diamondbacks score everywhere. They did not. You thought David Peterson was due to regress. He did not. I said Ryan Nelson stinks and he was going to be terrible. He was not. We got everything wrong possible with that game. So kids, listen, here's the lesson. When mommy and daddy fight, no one wins. Okay? Nobody wins. So uh, for, 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 the, for the morning wager audience, we have decided going forward that uh, we will not put out any more plays that we disagree on. We, we will stick to things that we both co-sign, that we both believe uh, are in the best interest of the, of the, the viewers of this show, the, the avid viewers of the show, the ones that come out in public to meet Brian Power at the Cleveland Guardians game. You guys, uh, we will do what's best for you going forward. So uh, we moved past the Mets and D-backs, which was quite the abortion yesterday, and uh, nobody wins. <laughs> we'll move on. But again, we did get our, our Braves Phillies over last night on, on our best bet, so there is that. And, you know, giving the people what they want. You have your eye on a, a very interesting line here as the Padres take on the Rays. Let's get to your half of the double play for Friday, Mark. Rays are favored against the Padres? In what world is this? You are jumping on the better team at a plus price, I do believe, in this one. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things here. One, I'm still not a believer in Todd Bradley, the starter for the Rays. Um, you know, this is a guy that... This is a guy that's like Brian Powers, like frenemy here when it comes to, you know, expected ERA and actual ERA. I don't even know if that's true. All I know is I don't think this guy's very good. And every time I look at his, his stat line, okay, it never looks good. Uh, five runs, four innings, four and two thirds, five innings, four, four and a third, six runs, uh, six innings, three runs. Like it was the best start against the A's over the last month and they still lost. Um, and then six innings, seven hits, six runs against the Dodgers. So, I'm willing to fade, fade Taj Bradley here with one of the best offenses in all of baseball on the road. The scary part of this game, and I think odds makers are giving you the kind of this heads up, is that Martin Perez is starting for, for San Diego. Number one, Tampa hits lefties pretty well, particularly at home. Number two, Martin Perez is also a guy who just like is screaming for regression. Since he's mm -hmm. come over from Pittsburgh to San Diego, um, the Padres have won every single start. Um, and they have scored three, six, eight, seven, and three runs for him. Uh, and he's allowed one, two, one, three, and one runs uh, in his five starts. So he's got a 2.70 ERA in a Padres uniform, which is something that Martin Perez does not carry ever. Um, there's probably a chance he carries an STD better than a 2.7 ERA. So uh, I don't know <laughs> that Lord. this point last. However, uh, I'm going to play into the fact that the Padres' bats on the road are really good. Tampa is fading and calling it quits. The Padres are in the midst of a playoff race here. We probably, and the crazy thing is, is this that total is at seven and a half. I think we probably get more runs than expected in this yeah. game here at BP, but I'm just not passing up the Padres here as a short underdog on the road. Yeah, Padres' top batting average in all of baseball. I like the over, but I'm with you too. I think the, the Padres are a better team than the Rays. Comment down below if you, too, are rolling with the Padres against the Rays. And you can comment on this one as well. It's my favorite situational play for Friday. Twins, Blue Jays, Minnesota, Mark, needs this one bad. They were just swept here at home by Atlanta earlier in the week. But Minnesota had Thursday off while the Blue Jays were in Boston. Now you look at the starting pitching matchup. Pablo Lopez versus Kevin Gosman. Looks to be pretty even on paper. I understand that Gosman's better on the road than he is at home. But get ready for it, ladies and gentlemen. Lopez, 3.52 expected ERA. Gosman, 4.75 expected ERA. And Lopez has been trending in a positive direction. 2.39 ERA. That's actual ERA for those who thumb your nose at expected ERA. Uh, his last eight starts, 
Gosman in his career against the Twins, not good. One and four with a 6.94 ERA and 12 starts. But the biggest edge market, I think you would certainly agree here, other than the schedule, the biggest edge for Minnesota today, it's in the bullpen. Toronto's bullpen stinks. It's bottom three in ERA for the season. It's cost them a lot of games. They don't have Bowden Francis, the great Bowden Francis, I should say, uh, to carry them to victory today. The, yeah, the, well, that was unbelievable. I mean, this guy might be the AL Cy Young winner the way he's going. But I think it's a great spot to back. The, I know that you're going to rant about Bowden Francis in a second. Let me just finish this up. It's a great spot for the Twins to get back on track Friday, and I am willing to lay the juice. It is minus 150, but it's minus 150 for a reason. Back the home team to get a win. Minnesota Twins, my half the double play to go along with Mark, who's taking San Diego at the plus price. Yeah, real quick, for those uh, who uh, did not buy the package yesterday that I put up at WT.buzz slash MZ, three plays, cash two of them. The only one I didn't cash was Bowden Francis over five and a half Ks. Uh, I, I, we talked about it on the show, right, yesterday. Um, this guy came out and is just throwing. It's unreal how well he's been pitching. He had a no hitter into the sixth inning. Now, in his previous four starts, he had gone at least five innings and struck out at least seven guys. Through five innings with a no hitter going, he struck out two. That was it. <laughs> Baseball. And he, everybody. Ended up, he ended up with five and didn't get over five and a half. So uh, we, we took we took one on the chin there. Small small bet on the prop play though. But nonetheless, Bowden Francis, look out for him, guys, the next time he uh, he's on the to- on the rubber in five days. He is feeling it. We will get to our best bet for the show in just a minute. Please comment down below with your favorite bets for Friday, whether it's Major League Baseball or college football. We've also got some college football talk, as I mentioned at the top, coming up later on. One of the biggest games on Saturday, Notre Dame, Texas A&M, I'll be tackling. But I do want to let you know, Mark talked about how he did yesterday going two and one. I was two for two. Started the college football season with a winner under on North Carolina, Minnesota. Once I got the 16-14, I felt good that there was going to be no overtime there. Now a perfect 5-0 and mark the last three days at Wager Talk. That is number oh, one during that stretch. 7-1-1 one, and one the last nine days. They do care, and I'm going to get through this despite what you and Joe Ranieri may say. And I am going to have a 5% Major League Baseball play locked and loaded for today. Check that out. There you go. I'm 80%. I've only released five 5% plays in Major League Baseball all season this year. I am 4-1 and one with those. So head on over to WT.buzz slash BP. Best bet for the show, Mark. Once again, just when you think you've got the answers, we change the questions. How come I have to sit here and listen to you drone on about how great you are? You don't even give me the opportunity to do it myself. I just kind of thought you did. Oh, we, I okay. Know. Okay. Well, talk, no. okay. Me talking all right, about all right. a bad loss is not droning on about how well I've done. Well, you mentioned two and one. I thought you were a modest guy. Anyway, oh, let's do it this anyway. way. Okay. <laughs> just when the just, no, hold on. Just when the people thought they had the answers, we changed the questions. Our best bet. We don't even know who the opposing starting pitcher is going to be. We mm. don't care. We're taking it <laughs> because we're locked and we're locked and loaded on one side. So tell the people why they shouldn't even give a damn who start for the Tigers. They should take the Red Sox. And please tell them what you have available at wagertalk.com today. Now, I'll just tell them about the bet because that's all they really care about. I'm not here to toot my own horn like Brian Power is. Uh, nonetheless, guys, when you make the bet here, okay, <laughs> when you make the bet here, just play action or make sure that Tanner Houck, but, you know, away pitcher starts, Tanner Houck starts, and, and you should be good. Because as long as it's not Tariq Skubal starting uh, for the Detroit Tigers, I really don't care who starts in this matchup, simply because, especially if the Tigers are going with a bullpen game, Let's look at Boston's offense. Number four on the road and runs scored. Number four on the road and home runs hit. Number one in average. Number I'm sorry, number two in average. Number two in WSC plus. Number one in OPS on the road this year. This team hits the ball on the road. They're going to score. You know what the Tigers don't do? Score. Ever. You know? It's like me in high school. Just didn't happen. So um, I love the Red Sox in this spot here on the road. Uh, I think that the Tigers are kind of fading, uh, and they don't have much left. Um, the Red Sox still trying to stay in this race here as we look at it, but it's just the Red Sox offense. I know they strike out a bunch on the road. I just, I, I'm not even, I'm unbothered by who may start for Detroit. This it's about the Red Sox offense. If they can't score five or six runs in this game, then guess what? They're they're dead in the water anyway. They shouldn't even need that much because guess what? Detroit doesn't score that much, and the Red Sox bullpen is bad. I get it. Detroit's isn't much better. So we, we are welcoming a little bit of variance into this thing here. But again, uh, I would tend to tell you that the Red Sox should be able to score a bunch here in this game and win pretty comfortably. All right. Show best bet. Boston Red Sox, make sure to play action. I just looked it up. Scooble is set to go tomorrow. 
for Detroit. At least that's what ESPN has. So I don't think we have to worry about them pulling the switcheroo and throwing him in there. So uh, let us know what you think of the Boston Red Sox tonight. Also head on over to WT.buzz slash MZ where Mark Zinno is not only a fantastic handicapper, but an even better human being. Okay, let's transition to college football right now. Well, I think they should. All right, let's go to college football. Big game tomorrow night in College Station. Texas A&M, Mark Zinno, who hasn't gone over their win total in a season, I think, since the uh, Clinton administration. Uh, Now favored against Notre Dame, number seven Notre Dame. There you see it. A lot of people I know and respect like this A&M side. If you've been listening to the Power Five all summer, you know I'm on Texas A&M to make the college football playoff this year. I don't love them favored in this spot, though, Zinno. Uh, I'd love to get your thoughts on that because, you know, they open up as a dog. What I'm looking to do here, to be honest, from looking at these two sides, whoever loses this game Saturday, I'm going to come back and bet that team to make the college football playoff. Either put more money on a and to do it or bet Notre Dame. I think both of these teams after this game are capable of running the table when you look at the schedule. I'm going to stay away from the side personally for clients. Um, I, I was talking to our buddy, AK, uh, Aaron Kidd last night. He loves a He put that out on Twitter so I can talk about yeah, that. He, uh, he's but, not, you know what um, starts scaring though is like everybody feels like everybody is on A&M, right? I, it, it, yes, I, yes, yes. I'm talking to, it's making me a little bit unnerved, um, you know, in this spot here. Look, I think defense rules today, to be honest with you. I, I still, even though you missed the best of the number, I still think the under is probably the better way to go. Yeah, and, you know, Mike Elko comes in, you know, Thank God. I mean, A&M fans, I don't need to tell you guys, thank God you're moving on from that dinosaur Jimbo Fisher, his hideous uh, ways of coaching. Okay, I think that that's only a positive. I'm buying Elko, what he brings to the table. You talk, what's Elko's specialties, you know? Defense. What's interesting, yesterday we were talking Clemson, Georgia, you and I, okay? And, I, and we were, you know, kind of going back and forth. Do you play Clemson full game if you like them, or do you play them first half? What's interesting, I'm with you. I think the under is the right call here. And then I looked at the first half under. Odds makers are hip to that angle. It is a low first half number. I think it's either 21 and a half, 22 and a half. So no, I mean, it, there's not a ton of value there on that, but I think they're telling you something. It's going to be a slow start in this game between two top 25 teams in college station. And, and oh, by the way, I would say this much too about Riley Leonard without disparaging him too much. Like, I feel like he was good for the ACC, like as far as a quarterback is concerned. Going up against the SEC defense is a different world for Riley Leonard. Um, he's still recovering from the injury, ankle and knee, whatever it was. I think he had a, you know, an offseason surgery, obviously, so he's not 100%. I mean, I, I think Notre Dame's going to have a hard time scoring points. Now, what can A&M do offensively? Hard to figure out at this point in time, but again, I the, the – I know we're not at a key – key numbers in college totals don't really resonate the way they do in the NFL. I know we're below 47, which, you know, 27-20 is sort of a easy final to get to, which puts you on the over, not the under. But, you know, again, uh, it's one of those things where if, if they go over in the first half, I still have a feeling like there's a chance it could stay under for the game. But I don't think that happens mm-hmm. either way. Uh, yeah, Riley Leonard, I don't think he's going to make the transition to Notre Dame as well as Sam Hartman, another ACC quarterback, did. And, oh, by the way – you think Mike Elko knows Riley Leonard Zeno? Yeah, I think he knows him pretty well. So uh, that's another angle to consider. All right, that's Notre Dame, Texas and a big game. A-, a late game for all you degenerates who want to stay up late on Saturday. Mark's got one for you here. Arizona and New Mexico. Mark, New Mexico closed as a double-digit dog at home last week against an FCS team, Montana State. Yes, they covered. Yes, they were winning big, but they got two defensive touchdowns along the way. Arizona's a big favorite. How does Brent Brennan do in his debut in Tucson Saturday night? Uh, this should be a choke and smoke fest by Arizona. Um, I, Jed Fish, I thought the world of as a coach. Brett Brennan uh, from San Jose State, uh, you know, doesn't really move the needle. But what moves the needle for me is two things. One, quarterback Noah Fafita for Arizona, uh, who I think might be worth a little bit of a shekel in the Heisman conversation. If you look at the numbers he put up last year, uh, just absolutely eye-popping kind of numbers. Uh, and this offense is going to get even better with Tete Arioa. I can't even say his name. Tete Arioa, McMillan, their wide receiver, he's, he's excellent. Um, so two of the top players sticking around. A lot of other starters are back. 
oh, by the way, this was an Arizona defense last year that was viciously good. Um, when you look at the end of the year, um, you know, this was a team that was shutting teams down. Linebacker Jacob Manu is back. Takario Davis is back. They have both their safeties back. Um, this was a there, there's a reason why the Arizona Wildcats have been ranked in the preseason poll for the first time in basically almost a decade. Um, this is a team, even with Brett Brennan, that is locked and loaded for a very good run this year. How will they fare in the Big 12? That remains to be seen. But I'm not shy about laying this 31 here at home against a very bad New Mexico team who might have put their best effort forth to try to get a win and the best shot that they had it. They're going to get outclassed here. They're not going to get defensive touchdowns here. Um, you know, this is easily a, a you know 40 to 41 to three type final, uh, if you ask me. If, if New Mexico is held below 10, Arizona should easily cover this number. You want to look at the Arizona team total of 44 and a half, little rich for my blood. Rather just lay the 31 and a half because in reality, guys, they can win 37 nothing, uh, and and you don't get the team total. I think there are more outs here laying the 31 with Arizona. So that's the direction I'm going to go. Love it. Love it. Major League Baseball, college football, we're giving you everything now here on the Morning Wager. If you already haven't subscribed, do that now. If you haven't hit that thumbs up button, do that now. Of course, Mark and I, every Monday through Friday, giving you free plays. We're going to be still doing baseball the rest of the season. Now we're integrating college football. NFL will be here next week. Very excited for that. How does a free week of winners sound, Mark? You can get a full week of free week of selections, free of charge, with the purchase of a two-week all-access pass at wagertalk.com. By the two weeks, we'll throw in a third week of service at no extra cost. It gives you not only every premium football release, but MLB as well. Soccer, if, if you get from me. Uh, I've already posted a college football best bet for Saturday. I've got my EPL game of the week out as well. Now a 20-8 and eight run in college football going back to last year, Mark, and an 8-0-1 yeah. run in the EPL going back to last season. Uh, I know you're you looking forward to a big weekend as well. No, I just love well, Patty's playing. Number two handicap. I'll have a college football player for the day or Jingles back. <laughs> Morning wager will be back <laughs> Monday. Thank you very much for WTF. Have a great weekend, folks. Mark, you know, yeah. it's just sticky. <laughs> I always got my back.